Yeah, I'm gonna call to order the Capitol of the City Council regular meeting of Thursday the 13th. Let's rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. from closed session. The uh, city council met to discuss and deliberate the public employment and the award of an interim contract as well as the city attorney performance evaluation. They'll be taking action in closed an open session here uh, shortly. Okay, and we will have to change uh, from 30 to 60 days on the, right, okay, so that's noted. We'll discuss that in the open session. Okay, thank you. I just wanna make sure everyone knows about that. Okay, so I'll attempt to read this carefully. This meeting is Cablecast Live on Charter Communication, Cable TV Channel 8, and ATV, excuse me, AT&T Uverse Channel 99, and is being recorded to be rebroadcast on the following Wednesday at 8 a.m. and Saturday following the first rebroadcast at 1 p.m. on Charter Channel 71 and Comcast Channel 25. Meetings are also available viewed live from the city's website. Our te technician tonight is Kingston Rivera. And if you have cell phones, please turn them off during the meeting. And if you wanna make a comment coming to the podium, please put your name if you'd like it recorded. Any additional materials received, clerk? There were none. Okay, uh, this is a time for public comments Anyone in the audience is welcome to make a public comment at three minutes for any item that's not on the agenda. Please come forward. If you want your name recorded in the minutes, you could add it to the list there. Thank you. I just pulled that closer to you. Very well. This is being broadcast. Is that Are better? Yeah, no, I think Around so. Thanks. Uh, I, I had uh, sent some information earlier today. Hopefully you might have received it. It's unlikely we've been able to read through it. Um, but I wanted to use the public um, comment time to follow through on a, a project I've been working with staff and some of the directors since last year. Uh, I have a group that I work with, architects and engineers, and we've been assembling some uh, a, a submission set for a construction project. And as we began to work through that process and working with staff, uh, we began to see that uh, we had some difficulty when we looked at sections of the ordinance. Oh. And the, the project itself is a emergency shelter, a, a personal emergency shelter, a place where you'd have water and food and some of those types of provisions that allow you in the event of, um, of an emergency. And um, in working with staff, the, the problem we began to see, and I only, only have three minutes, so I'm, I'm trying to talk quickly, but, um, but we began to see that some of the ordinance just, just isn't really set up for an emergency shelter land use. Okay. And so, uh, so I, I've written it up in these provisions. I'm asking that maybe uh, if you have a chance, you'd look at it on your own. Uh, Katie actually reached out to me this afternoon and we're gonna meet next week and continue to try to push this. But with some small and simple tweaking, um, I think it could be something that's fixed. I, I hope council, uh, the mayor and vice mayor and council would agree that the idea of being prepared in the event of emergency is a very positive thing. And it's, it's, it's uh, additionally more beneficial for our emergency responders because when we're prepared and you have an emergency, it lightens that burden. Mm -hmm. And so an emergency shelter itself, which I've written up in here, it does provide a lot of, or all of the benefits that allow someone to be prepared in the event of that. And it's the ordinance that has not comprehended it. So it's a, it's a room that's vacant and mm -hmm. ready. And uh, right now under your ordinance, uh, you would be forced to analyze that as a house expansion mm -hmm. or a secondary dwelling unit, which neither is the goal. Mm -hmm. And if it were the goal, then you'd have to contemplate things like schools and library taxes and those kinds of things by expanding. You'd have to look at it, how it affects the neighborhood. Mm -hmm. And an emergency shelter is predominantly underground. It's only occupied by uh, the occupants of the residents effectively. So you're not creating a, a new family or additional burden in the neighborhood. And so the ordinance itself really doesn't have a provision to have something that's built. It's not contemplated as an expansion or a residence or a living area and sleeping quarters. 
and uh, most of the cities use what's called an accessory structure. And, and this city's accessory structure uh, comprehends that it can't have any occupancy, it can't have sleeping quarters, it can't have living areas. And so we're asking that something like this with some slight adjustment to the definitions uh, would solve the problem. Okay, thank you very much. Um, uh, you're working with the right person, Katie, and uh, so you have a good start. Yes, sir, thank you. Okay, Dan. thanks for your comments. Any other comments from those here in attendance? Okay, seeing none, any city council and staff comments? Um, so on June 5th, I was um, asked to attend the Santa Cruz County Youth Violence Prevention Task Force. And what I learned there, our mayor was in attendance as, uh, as well. And this seemed, it was the last meeting that they held. And what I'd like to ask is if in maybe a next meeting, city manager, if we can have the chief or those who have participated in the task force present. But it was awesome. Future item. Future item. Okay, great. Um, Ed? I have nothing. Okay. Nothing for me. Yeah. Oh. Um, so I attended with Yvette too. It was great. And I've come up with a couple ideas. Um, we broke up into committees, and the one I chose was coming up with fun events. And um, so there's this great event that um, happens in East Bay, San Francisco East Bay. <coughs> and it's basically run with a cop. So um, you have, I'm, I've seen a bunch of pictures already, it's very exciting. So it's the idea that the youth in the area interact with the police from that city and there's runs organized. So I'm gonna find out more about it. Um, there was a CHP guy, a chip guy that's um, CHP that's involved and he's reached out to me, exchanged cards, so, um, and you were there when, yeah, you were there. So we're at your store, um, you were, yeah. And it was this guy, this guy had this t-shirt on, I just had to ask him about it. Turns out he was the CHP guy. And so that was a good one. Um, and another one I thought of, um, but we'll talk about it later, is getting youth involved in starting businesses, working with um, various groups in the community. So with that, those are my comments. Any comments from staff? Mr. Mayor, members of the council, I'm pleased to announce that in today's adopted budget by the state of California, um, the state included $2 million for the Capitola Wharf Rehabilitation Project. This budget request oh, and was uh, funded really, really through the leadership of Assemblymember Stone, who was uh, instrumental in getting this budget request through. And I also want to thank the governor, Gavin Newsom, for, for including it in the draft budget and everybody who's contributed to help make that happen. So it's a great start on funding our wharf, and I know we're going to be discussing it later this evening. Okay, thank you very much. So it's great news. Yeah. Great news. Okay, moving on to um, consent calendar. At this point, we have items on the consent calendar. If there's anyone in the audience that would like to pull an item on this consent calendar, please state so right now. Seeing none from those in the audience, is there anything from city council members that would like to pull the consent calendar? Mayor, um, I don't uh, wish to pull an item, but I, I do want to announced that um, I'm going to recuse myself on item D. Um, I am a member of the BIA and subject to the levy, um, and I don't believe it would be appropriate for me to vote on that, so. Okay. We'll ignore you for that. Any? No? Okay. Do I hear a motion on the consent calendar? Motion to adopt consent calendar. Is there a second? Second. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Except for the Excuse me. Yeah. Okay. So it's moving on to item eight. We're now in general government. So we have a report on the proposed wharf rehabilitation options, which uh, Jamie's already led into. And Steve, our director of public works, is going to give the report. Good evening, Mayor and Council. Trying to get somehow we got advanced in this. The item before you tonight is an update on the uh, Capitol Wharf Rehabilitation Project. I'm going to give you a very short kind of how we got here, and then Brad Porter from Moffett Nichols is going to give you a, a more detailed report. Um, we came to the council um, last year with five options, and those options um, were um, everything from just um, 
extending the trestle part to rebuilding the entire wharf costs of seven million to twenty five million dollars. We were asked to develop some phasing alternatives um, for those projects, which is what we're here tonight to discuss with you. And uh, with that, I will introduce Brad Porter from Moffat Nickel Engineering, who's going to uh, walk you through. I've asked Brad to give us a little bit of history since we have two new council members who weren't um, on the council when we started this project. So he's gonna quickly give us a little more background and then get into the phasing options. So Brad, thank you. Okay, great, thanks Steve. Yes, I'm, uh, I'm Brad Porter with Moffat Nickel and also with me here is Sam Cooley another engineer with Moffat Nickel who's been involved in all of the things that I'm going to be talking about tonight. Um, he gave the first report, didn't he? First, yes, I remember. Yeah, Sam's, I think. Yeah, done, I remember. Okay. Done, uh, um, so yeah, over the past five years since 2015, just kind of summarizing the work that I've been doing with the city. First thing is, as I'm talking, um, just kind of go over the terminology and orient you so that up here you see a plan view looking down on the wharf. Uh, north is to the left, south is to the right. That's kind of how we refer to the orientation on the wharf. Um, in that, that top plan view, uh, although you can't see them too detailed, there's the rows of the piles starting at the, at the shore end, which I call the abutment there, the shore end being the abutment of the wharf. The, there's the rows of piles that we n number, starting at number one at the abutment, going out to about 75 at the end of the wharf, and those little numbers there on the top, one, 10, 20, 30, those are the rows of the piles, which is a common reference along the wharf. Um, another system is what we call stationing. On the bottom hand, there's the stations, that's hundreds of <coughs> feet, a common way of numbering linear like roads. So you can see from the bottom, the wharf is roughly 850 feet long. So if I say station three or four or 400, that's how many feet, hundreds of feet it is along the wharf. The narrow part that goes out to the wharf, I call the trestle. That narrow part that goes out to about bent 45 or station 550, so the trestle is about 500 feet long. The widened part out at the end I call the head of the wharf. Um, then looking at the bottom figure there, that's along the trestle, the structural elements, there's starting from the top down, there's the decking, and then those are supported by uh, longitudinal beams that we call stringers. Um, those stringers are supported by um, transverse beams that we call caps, pile caps that go across the tops of the piles that you're, you're seeing there. So, and then of course the piles themselves that support the whole wharf down to the, into the Monterey Bay seafloor. So, you know, decking, stringers, caps on the piles that form the pile bent, the rows that, that support it. So that's uh, kind of the wharf terminology, yeah. Here's sort of the recent uh, history of the wharf as far as the damage that's been done on this timeline. The top part there are the damage events that have occurred, and then the bottom part are the repair events, the major repair events that has, have occurred on the wharf since about 1980. In around 1981, there was some major repairs that were done on the wharf, about 60 piles were replaced. The wharf was largely rebuilt. Uh, a year or two later, there were some large winter storms. 1983, there was a lot of damage on the California coast. Um, I think numbers I've heard attributed to that were something around the 100-year return period, big waves. Some of the beaches or the piers in Southern California, Huntington, uh, I think Hermosa, Santa Monica withstood, uh, not withstood, experienced major damage. Um, I think some of them were almost entirely wiped out, Huntington Beach, I think, being one of them. Uh, and Capitola similarly had the, the, out at the end, I think there was major damage to that southern end. And that's when those steel piles were placed, I think in 83, 84, and the southern end of the Capitola Wharf was rebuilt. And then it, uh, for like the next 20 years, I think there was relatively uh, uneventful 
no, no real damage to the wharf. In 1994, there was some overtopping of the, of the wharf, but it, it, no severe damage was done, so nothing was, was done to it. In 1999, 98, 99, there was a major rebuild of the Capitola Wharf that was done. That was, uh, I had come to work for Moffat Nickel at that time, and I was, oversaw that. Those drawings were the ones that I had prepared. And um, for timber wharves that are on the order of 50 plus years old, uh, y kind of a typical thing is if you don't have constant maintenance that's, that's being done, say like at Santa Cruz Wharf, where they have a, a full-time maintenance staff that's out there repairing it every day, it's kind of typical that about every 20 years, you'll have to go and do a kind of a major maintenance effort. So 1998 was the last time that that was done. And then since then, there's again, the deck's been overtopped and there was some damage on the trestle. But since 98, um, there in about 2003, about some piles were replaced at Bent 12. 2009, about seven piles were replaced and the, the sewage ejector that sits underneath the bait shop that of course is lower, so it gets a lot of wave damage. There was a, um, a baffle that we designed that dissipates that energy. That was installed and then around 2016 there was um, a pile on the trestle that uh, was damaged that got replaced. Most recently the, um, the dock piles, the steel piles there were replaced. This is just a history since in that time period of where the piles have been damaged and it's it's pretty much throughout the wharf. They're color coded there. You can see down on the left hand side, 98, 2002, 2009, and 15. And there's no real pattern. That's, there's some on the trestle, there's some out at the end. It's just mixed throughout. There is a tendency for it to be on the west side of, that's the bottom as it's shown there graphically of the wharf, but certainly not um, um, a rule. But it tends to be on the west side because that's the predominant wave direction where, and, and generally what does the damage is a log, a large log that either comes out of Soquel Creek or maybe the San Lorenzo will get underneath and you know the waves get it hurling and it smacks the pile and, and um, now here in 2015 we had done a, an initial inspection. We went out by boat, Sam and I, and then two years later, we did the dive inspection underwater. So we did a complete inspection of all of the piles from deck down to the sand line. And what you're seeing at the bottom, the ones that are solid uh, are ones that need replacement. And the ones that have kind of an open, that cyan colored circle are ones that are damaged, but it's less than 50% damage. Um, out at the very end there, you see the um, six times two is 12 the 12 steel piles that are pretty severely corroded um, that need some that need to be addressed. So that's kind of the current state of affairs of what needs to get done. So after we did uh, the condition assessment, we met with, we, uh, we were asked to prepare kind of a, a wh what could the city do to increase the resiliency of the wharf? Um, you're seeing a picture there on the upper right hand sign that I think was taken around 2009 where on the trestle, all three piles that support the bent were taken out. And um, that's a critical condition. In that case, you have to close the wharf. And the only reason that that thing is not collapsing is just sort of the interconnectedness of the, the timber above. So in that case, it's kind of, that cap is hanging by the deck rather than supporting the deck, which is what it's supposed to do. But that's sort of the weak, link or the weak part of the wharf is, of course, you have to go across the trestle to get out to the head of the wharf. And if you lose, well, certainly if you lose all three piles like they did here, but if you lose, if you've only got three piles on the cap, and if you lose any of the outer ones, you, they, you pretty much have to close the wharf. Um, if you use, lose the middle one, you can, you can keep it open. But so we were asked to develop what can the wharf do to um, increase the resiliency of it. So we came up with various scheme schemes. You could jacket the piles. There's some things you could do with that. You could drive some additional timber piles, um, but none of that would be a guarantee that you would not sustain damage and have to drive more piles. 
One of the problems is that when you when you says like in that case where you when you lose three piles or maybe one or two, that you have to close the wharf. You have to mobilize a crane to go out on the wharf, and it's on a unit cost basis, it's pretty expensive. Um, just to get the crane out there, you're probably looking at sixty thousand dollars. So if you're driving one pile, you know normally we say driving a pile is around fifteen thousand dollars. If you if you have to just drive one, it's going to be eighty thousand dollars which on a unit cost basis is a pretty expensive undertaking. Um, so, but these other resiliency measures that we developed in 2016 and worked with the, the WARP committee on, they were all on the order of one or two million dollars. It's, um, and again, there's no guarantee where uh, that you might not lose a couple piles. So of th the scheme that we, I think, settled on is perhaps getting the most uh, benefit from would be to widen the trestle. And that's the part that you're seeing there in the blue. So that if you were to do that, that would have six piles going across and you would get both the benefit of doubling the amount of piles that you have. That one photo there where you lost all three, I wouldn't say never, but if you were to double it to six, it would be extremely unlikely that you would lose all six. So that was the option that we had um, come up with. The after the bond measure had passed, we were asked to develop um, for the wharf reconstruction or uh, repairs to develop some options to what could be done. And here you see th the widening of the trestle, anywhere from just the basic widening of the trestle to um, completely replacing the wharf in concrete, which, which would be kind of the long-term bulletproof solution to withstanding um, any damage that might occur. And these options r range from seven to $23 million. This one, this is the recent uh, historic review uh, that was done. This might be a little bit out of order with the next one, but this was just completed in the last couple of months um, as a historic um, analysis of the wharf and how it's contributed to, to the city of, of Capitola. Um, after the presentation of the alternatives to the council, which was this last uh, fall, we were asked to go back and develop a phased approach to what could be done right now that could then also be um, utilized in the future. So this is what we've come up with. And so phase one would be what can be done currently as part of the current reconstruction of it, that then later on, um, when more of the $20 million option of replacing the wharf in its entirety with the concrete structure and raising the, the deck elevation. In the, one of the vulnerabilities that the wharf has right now is your deck is at an elevation of 19.5. That's what we're showing there on the right-hand side, the south end of the wharf and the phase one option. Um, as you've experienced, for this location and for your wave climate, that is below, that's lower than even right now the 100-year wave event, which, and you've been overtopped a few times that <coughs> remember I showed in the timeline, so that's, that's um, one of the vulnerabilities you have. Between that and sea level rise, where the deck, if, if we were to build the wharf today, we would probably put it up at around elevation 24.5. Um, just by comparison, Santa Cruz Wharf is up at elevation 23 in its current um, configuration. So what we would do here in this phased approach is we would widen the trestle, as I described before, and replace the decking, re um, replace or place a new restroom out at the end between the, we're showing they're kind of in the, that purple outline between the bait shop and the restaurant, but then also provide a more permanent restroom on that widened portion down at the abutment or the north end of the wharf. Right now there's kind of a porta potty that's out there. So it would be two new restroom buildings, replacing the decking and widening the trestle to increase the resiliency of the, the wharf. And then in phase two, um, the piles that we would drive in for the widening portion or be, would be fiberglass piles. It's a relatively new, within the last five, six years, pile that's been developed that can be filled with concrete. And then in phase two, those piles could be spliced onto, that's the purple 
on the right hand side there's a section and an elevation looking at the trestle so that um, in phase two as the wharf gets raised you can see on the bottom there we're ramping up where we would match the elevation at the shoreline and ramp up to the 24 feet out at the end those piles could be added on to spliced with similar fiberglass piles um, to beat the elevation of the new wharf deck as the new concrete piles would be installed there in the, the blue, that cyan phase, um, ramping the trestle up to meet the head out at the new 24.5 um, elevation. And at that time, the buildings, the bait shop and the restaurant would, uh, would get replaced. Um, so that's um, my prepared remarks. If you have any questions, I could certainly I'd like just to kind of finish off the report that saying the recommendation is for you to approve the phased approach. We would then proceed with preliminary design work for phase one and included in that would be starting the permitting and environmental clearance work. We anticipate that'll take approximately 12 months to complete. So 12 months to get the permits in place and before we go to final design. So that's what the direction we're looking for tonight is approval of phase one to proceed with design and permitting and environmental clearance. Um, just regarding the cost, there, the costs were in the bottom of that last slide, but phase one is about a five and a half million dollar project. Phase two is about a 14 and a half million dollar project. So um, right now, especially with the great news that Jamie gave us. <laughs> Keep going. Okay, sorry. <laughs> um, we have sufficient funding with the Measure F funds to to complete phase one at this time. So that's the direction we're looking for and Brad and I'd be happy to answer any questions. Okay. Um, I see questions from Ed and Sam. Ed first and Sam and Ed. Just a quick technical question about the vents. Okay. So uh, in the trestle that we're adding, the, 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 the one vent is has the three piles that connect it. Is there some kind of structural member that connects the two vents or do they stand independent? Because I know that they're they're independent beams. Are they connected, or does there is there any advantage to that? Um, I guess the, the simple answer is to be determined. I, I would say my that's one of the things that we would do during the detailed design process. But in general, yes, I would connect them together. Y y yeah, yeah, I'd connect the two two caps together. It would theoretically be stronger. Yeah, just you're you're sharing the um, <coughs> you're increasing the stiffness so that when a log or anything hits it, it um, the more piles you have in a row, the, str the, the, the stronger, the less deflection you get, so. Great, yeah. thank, thank you. Yeah. Oh, thank you. Um, the history of repairs, is, is there a cost figure on how much the city has spent to uh, do those repairs, let's say going back to 1980? I have looked at it once. I don't have that number in my mind right now, so um, certainly something I can provide to the council at a later date. I, yeah, I think I would be interested in uh, seeing what those are, okay? Uh, hopefully the whole purpose of this is to avoid those expenditures yep. over the life. Um, I, I do know that, excuse me, Mayor, or uh, Councilman Story, I know when we've done pile replacements, we're, we're paying close to twenty or $30,000 a pile just yeah. because the, the mobilization costs. So we probably spent a couple hundred thousand dollars each time we've done a pile replacement. I know the major, um, project that happened in 1999 it's before I was here, but I think I believe that was a $2 million uh, improvement project that widened the the base of the wharf and also redecked it. So those are costs I know. Um, what the costs were back in the 83 storm, I, I do not know. Excuse me. Okay. Um, the phase one <coughs> portion, what would the life of that um, uh, rehabilitation be? or? I would say it's certainly at least 10 years. I would say 10, 20 years at least. Um, on your first question, I know that we I, we would have the bid prices from 2000. We were, because we, we had received those, but um, there's sort of, a, see if I can just sort of describe it, but um, it's kind of like a shark sawtooth graph that goes down. Is that wh what we find with wharves, timber wharves in particular, is that you know over time they kind of deteriorate, and you'll they'll either fail 
or at some point you spend a bunch of money and that kind of gets you back up on the on the the, the curve the lifespan and then you know continues to deteriorate and then you spend some money but it's always sort of a a down and at some point you're spending more money on your repairs than you would just to replace it yeah, right and um, at what point is that you I mean you can maintain it I don't want to say indefinitely but just for example the Capitol Wharf was originally built in what 1860 1850s right. and there's been various replacements and additions to it over time Santa Cruz Wharf was built in 1914 it's now over 100 years old but like I said they have a full-time maintenance staff if you have a full-time maintenance staff and you do continuous repair you can probably keep it going almost indefinitely but if you're sort of doing you know the periodic it's I know I'm not answering your question specifically, but that's right. sort of the general trend. Um, and I would say that within the next 40 years, you're probably at that decision point of do we keep repairing or do we replace it? That's And that's where that phase two comes in. I think you oh, would be in. So even after we complete phase one, we're still going to be confronted with that issue? Well, <laughs> of do you need to do replacement? I'd say that right now, every 20 years, as you did in 98 and you did in, 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 in 84, the figure that every 20 years you're going to have to make a substantial investment in repair. And I think that's where you're at right now on that order of, yeah, replacing a bunch of piles and the decking and a bunch of other stuff on the order in present dollars of, you know, four to eight million dollars. Sure. Okay. My recollection is in, in, in 98, it was on the order of one and a half or a million dollars. That's just off the top of my head. I could be wrong, but adjusted for inflation, that's probably comparable to about what you're looking at now. Okay, um, but these are fiberglass piers, right? Pilings. Pilings, yeah. What, um, which would have a longer life than the timber pilings? Absolutely, yes, okay. absolutely. And this, they're fairly new, and we're starting to use them on projects. But they have the promise, especially if you fill them with concrete. They're essentially inert. To the, there's there's no saltwater degradation. There's no um, organism attack that you have. There, there's worms, tree pile worms that eat away at the piles. Mm -hmm. The fiberglass is inert. They, there's nothing that will eat them. And if you fill them with concrete, they, um, I would say that th their expected life would be at least 40 to 50 years. Forty, okay. At That's least. That's great. Yeah. Um, I noticed that we have some fiberglass piles at the at the at, at the base of the war. Um, do they come in other colors than black? Um, okay, I can talk about piles all night. Um, the, the widening there, those ones that the, we actually did the widening, they're, strictly speaking, they're not fiberglass. They are, okay. they're steel piles inside, and then they have high density polyethylene coating, HDPE, about a two inch thick. Uh -huh. Those are great piles. Unfortunately, they're no longer available. Um, but a similar, a modern piling, um, Fiberglass is kind of the, the most current version of that. The fiberglass, they will come in different colors. We were, I was just reading this the other night. The manufacturer's literature says they they do come. I've seen them in kind of that dark brown and then, of course, black. Um, but I believe, if I'm not I, I believe in th th those are Lee composites, and I believe they said you can get them in different colors, yes. Okay. Okay. Well, I, and we'll get back to that. I assume that the design is going to come back to us before we actually go out. So, um, uh, but that's good to know that w we have some other options than just having a forest of black uh, pilings going. Yeah, I think our now. goal is for the historic context too, is to is use a brown pile to try and match the wood look yeah. as much as okay. we can. Okay, that's great. Um, and Steve, your last statement, you said we have enough money uh, uh, from Measure F to complete phase one, um, but is, do we have, is it projected that we will have any additional money for phase two, or, and if so, when? And At this point, you know, Measure F has a sunset to it, um, and uh, probably eight more years left on it. Um, it I think it has a total revenue of between 10 and $11 million, but certainly it's, it's funding the, the flume and the jetty project um, so right now, no, there is no identified funding source for phase two. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Sure, thank you. Okay, just a couple um, 
question. So after reading the report, it was mentioned that our wharf is not considered a historical landmark. Is that correct? So it's over 50 years old. So from that standpoint, it is historic. It is not a listed on the National Historic Monument at this point. So okay. it's not a listed structure, but it is a historic structure. And so, I mean, potentially I historic. Right. So as we move forward with the design, we plan to maintain the historical value or Absolutely. historical. Okay. That's why we had the historic analysis done. Okay. Just wanted to be clear. And then, has there been any talk in the past? Um, or on previous council regarding additional parking opportunities um, on the wharf itself or re moving them around or getting more spots available at the end there? So uh, I'll be honest with you, past councils have probably tried to go the opposite direction and reduce parking on there. Mm -hmm. um, but that's something we could look at. The options that we looked at um, when we did our option analysis back here, which was last fall, we did find ways in this bottom one, you can see where we actually widened the head and made right. the head bigger. So that that's something we could look at when we um, work on the head of the wharf, that we could widen it. And like that little parking. nook area. Right, you could add nook areas here, it. yeah. Mm -hmm. One issue um, with cars on the wharf, they are probably the largest um, damage Cause oh. to the decking right. uh, is driving cars on them. Yeah. Um, part of this design, we're actually going to try and put tire strips and try and strengthen that so the tires, cars would drive down, you know, two strips like you see on a driveway every now and then, and they mm -hmm. drive down that, which would help save the decking. But um, mm -hmm. that's something we'd want to look at if we're expanding the parking out there as ways to further protect the wharf. Yeah, I'd appreciate it uh, looking into that further. There's small room for for parking opportunity parking and right. you know m per not many tourists may know about those spots but but so we that would be part of the phase two just to, to be clear phase oh. one we're talking about here is just the widening of the trestle portion and we're not talking about widening the head at this point but if you like so you'd like us to look at the widening out just here that head? little piece there and what that would okay. possibly cost okay. and, yes, we and could look how at many that. spots i mean right. it would just be an incentive to folks that actually live here and you know okay a little i'm sorry yeah we could look at that yeah thanks so i have a question actually um, i have two questions the um fiberglass with the cement fill how stiff is that in comparison and will that match the current um, piling so that you, you don't get a discordant motion? Um, I think that the um, the fiberglass pile unfilled just by itself has a similar um, stiffness to the to the timber, probably even to be a little bit more flexible. Um, I think it's something out of harmony, you know. Right, right. trying to think of the easiest way um, I think the the way we look at it is sort of another way to look at it is if you tie it all together the um, for the lateral motion of course the stiffest member is going to is going to suck up the most load if you were to fill them all with concrete I think it undoubtedly would be the stiffer element um, and it would suck up the load and that is something we would we would have to look at um, yeah. but you could tie them together and maybe offset some of that distribute Exactly. As long as the um, you want to maintain a certain amount of flexibility, just the timber wharf does move during um, during wave events. That's part of how it it just dissipates. The, yeah, the, the energy. Um, but that's what you were asking earlier, Ed, was about the whether we would tie the two together. By and large, you would want to do that. The more you can get all the piles to work as a giant spring, right, th yeah. the better. Um, if we did do a seismic joint with it, you could get there. You probably would get the different, the dissonant energy. They have a different, mm -hmm. different periods, so you could get some, mm -hmm. some pounding if you didn't connect them. Mm -hmm. We'd have to look at that to where either you would have to make a big enough gap, like a seismic joint, but a wave joint, so that they don't slam into one another, mm -hmm. which also tends to make the argument for for tying it all together. My my gut feeling is we would tie it all together and just have it all act in unison. Okay. Um, since one of our problems has been um, various lines, uh, uh, service lines uh, being broken, and you know, like you said, it's closer to the wave force. Um, are we anticipating a special way to protect those, like running them new lines inside of 
fiberglass larger <laughs> pipes of some sort, let's say. What we're planning on doing is to get all the all the um, utilities up above the, the decking, you know, how you have the outriggers for the handrails. Oh, right okay. now the gas line goes through that. Got it. And okay. I think kind of following that, because I think before that, it, it hasn't been damaged since it went in, since it no. got raised up, yeah. has it? No. Yeah, clearly that's our goal is to bring all the utilities up above the deck. Including sewage? Including sewage. So we'll have to have pumps on the other end. Well, we have a pump on the wharf already. Oh, I did know that one. Yeah. Oh, we yeah. do. Okay. Yeah, so yeah. everything's pumped off the wharf, so we, we have that flexibility. Yeah. Okay. I have no further questions. Um, please stay here. Uh, any questions from the... I oh, have, you, I have, I'm, I'm sorry. sorry. I just have a follow-up question. The... The report here, the total says seven, is that seven million? Is that, right. that's different from that our report? That included two million dollars for replacement of the buildings. Okay, and so in our report. Yeah, we, we what we're recommending now since, um, based on the previous council and the wharf group that has looked at this was to not replace the buildings until we could put them in at an elevation at 24 and a half, which would be part of phase two. So at this point, we are deferring replacement of the buildings on the wharf uh, we did put two hundred thousand dollars in the preliminary budget for doing some renovation work um, to the buildings, but uh, that that's the difference for the cost. Okay, and then just a quick follow up: we're waiting to hear back about the grant for the flume, and yes. the, and so do we. I don't remember the timeline on that. So we will be hearing a uh, long ways away. Um, okay. January of next year is okay. when we will be hearing. Because would that and possibly? And it'll be official actually when the state budget is signed. So a year from now. Today. Okay. When we will I know for certain that we have that grant funding. I was just thinking that might free up some more measure F, F, F measure yeah. F dollars for us to do more in this phase one project. But I don't know if those timelines, those aligns with our timelines. Yeah, that'll leave more measure F money for other projects probably at okay. that point. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. I'm sorry. Um, 700 for the restrooms, that's going to be near the um, abutment? So there's two restrooms that we're proposing, one between the buildings out there and one at the base of the wharf. But the phase two is the one between the buildings, right? So yeah. near the abutment or at the abutment, that would be? There's one here at the okay. abutment or the base and one between the buildings. Is, is that the modular one I think you've been looking at? I, that's what we're looking at. And we okay. haven't finalized that and made that decision yet. But I okay, I'm just curious where, is, where it was in design. Yep. Okay, um, no questions up here. Any questions from those in the audience here? It's now the time to get an idea of what um, I see you know. No questions? Okay. Well, it's fair to ask a question. This is the time to do it. Questions or comments? Or comments. Thank you for the opportunity, uh, uh, Mayor, uh, members of the council and staff. Uh, yes, I hadn't, uh, I'm Willie Case. Uh, I am owner of the Wharf House Restaurant, and uh, I hadn't really come here to make any comments, but merely to listen. But uh, uh, I was just, I made a w was made aware of the, uh, the conversation that was going to take place ton uh, tonight. Uh, uh, by reading the paper Tuesday, and I, I would have kind of liked to maybe had uh, a little bit of a heads up on the fact that we were uh, at this point in, uh, in reviewing the options. Uh, uh, as some of you may know, I know the council's changed uh, uh, recently, but uh, um, I, I served on the architectural uh, uh, committee um, in the review of an uh, architectural uh, group to, uh, to study this. And uh, work with the Moffat Group, but I um, we we had a couple of public meetings that uh, uh, public came in, made their uh, comments and what have you, and then things have kind of fallen through the cracks since then. Uh, and I, I understand the reasons for that. I know that there's some budgetary uh, issues that uh, need to be looked at, but um, I really would like, uh, uh, in the way of a comment, to. Uh, uh, ask that maybe we resume our uh, uh, subcommittee meetings, so or subcommittee meetings, and uh, I'd like to do that. I, I, I know Steve's a very busy man, and uh, uh, but I, I we have a lot of people in, involved uh, in, in the decisions that will be made about the wharf, uh, um, and it'd be nice if uh, I could answer those questions. I you know we have an enormous amount of people come to the restaurant on the weekends, we're a very popular place, very fun place on the weekends now that we have our, our deck open. And uh, 
I'm always trying to answer questions. The public has an enormous amount of questions. They want to know, well, is this our last year? Is this it? What are we, uh, blah, blah, blah. Um, and I think if we could resume our uh, subcommittee meetings and uh, keep uh, myself and maybe Frank uh, informed as to where we are with things, uh, it it make, make us look a little smarter when we uh, address those questions. So anyway, um, thank, thank you. you very much. Um, I think Steve's heard that and move forward if it's uh, something possible. Certainly when the new plans come out, I'm sure you'll get a first crack at looking at them. Any other comments from those in attendance? Okay, coming back to <coughs> City Council. Uh, so, Rick, may I ask, um, yes, concerning on that um, request to ha uh, for the work subcommittee meeting, didn't wasn't there a work study group that used to meet regularly? Yeah, and we've we've met, and we met when we were originally phasing out this project. Um, admittedly, as we got set aside and did the historic report and put this phasing report, I failed to hold another meeting, but I will do so shortly. Okay, so then. All right, yeah, thank there you. is a work working group. Yes. Good. Okay. Thank you, Steve. Yeah, it occurs to me since the the owner of the Wharf Restaurant meets a lot with the public, uh, it's a great way to get the the message out, and maybe we could also post something if there's a possibility of doing that at your restaurant, so that uh, some of the facts that are you know being discussed here could be and approved, perhaps being um, a way to get to the public. So I think at this point we're trying to decide. Okay, I think Ed is going to jump in with the motion here. On which I think that's what we're here to do is to yes. discuss it. So, yep. um, uh, my comments on this: I think this is a great plan. I think uh, I've made uh, Moffat Nickel come here at least three times, and uh, I'm after the uh, working wharf committee. I met with uh, Council Member Peterson and myself. Um, they made some good presentations, and what I like best about this is, is I think this gives us a chance to deliver on our obligation on Measure F, which was to rebuild the wharf. And it also makes that commitment towards, um, in my mind, it, it opens the door for the future of rebuilding the entire wharf because of the phasing, phase one and two. And the only thing new that makes that possible is uh, this introduction of these concrete pier, these fiberglass piles that are um, able to be added on to because that was the reason why we shied away from many of the other plans because it would, didn't do any good to, to strengthen the wharf if we had to tear out the piles to drill them again. And I think that if we do reuse these piles, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to just round off, okay, Brad, you know, I, I know you have exact numbers, but if we build this, you know, if we spend six million, leverage $6 million here to strengthen the wharf, which a lot of that probably at least another million of it is putting an all new decking on it is. The substructure, which is what I'm mostly concerned about, can be added on to and f for about a million dollars we can, that's the cost of retrofitting and raising those and tying it in to what I hope is the, the new future wharf at the uh, elevated portion with, with the one on the bottom and, and the end result that the, the, the restaurant and everything is at the new 24.5 feet. To Willie, to your concerns, I think the reason that you maybe you haven't been involved is is that this plan now is just basically going to deal with the structural trestle part and has, will have absolutely no impact on you and the restaurant. Is that fair to say, Steve? <laughs> virtually no, <laughs> in, virtually no impact. There'll be opportunity if we do do the restrooms out the at the head of the work. There'll be opportunities to kind of do some work. At the right, other than the restaurant, but structurally we're building this alongside, and and which means normal operations, no interruption which I think is there's some relief to you and uh, uh, the only way that we would ever um, interrupt your service now is if we do find funding for phase two, which, you know, as, as Steve mentioned, Measure F is not going to have that allocation, which <coughs> I think opens the door for this council to look at if they really believe in the, the, the wharf plan as a master plan is is some sort of extension on Measure F to uh, to generate that funding. It's pretty much a, a million dollar a year uh, fund, Mr. City Manager, is about accurate, about a million dollars a year, and, and I know that that has other city needs, but um, I like the fact that this has the concrete pylons. I like the fact that, I mean, I, I, I seem to think, um, you know, when we were talking about doing a, 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 a wharf that would be bulletproof, it would be made out of concrete. I think none of us want the aesthetics of concrete and the, uh, the option to wrap them in fiberglass and to have some selection of color I think gives us a we can build something that is going to be as strong as concrete because it is, but yet aesthetically will 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 not 
you know, make people, people like the look of the wharf. Uh, so, um, and when we get, get ready to redesign in those buildings, uh, Willie, if there ever is a phase two, I'm th that's what that committee was selected for. And uh, I think we, we're all excited about that would look like, but I think this is a start uh, with, the, with the piles, um, the tying it together. Um, I, 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 I think there was a lot of work you guys did. You, you listened to what we said, you came back, you brought us a good plan, it's reasonable, it's doable, and, and the beauty is we can afford it. So um, I'm gonna make a motion to approve uh, staff recommendation. Motion and can a second. Um, may I ask for a friendly amendment that we include to ask staff to write a letter to assembly uh, member uh, Stone to thank him for his efforts and uh, the two million dollar grant toward this project? At, at a minimum, we should do that. Absolutely, <laughs> but um, I, I think it would be good to include that as part of the motion. And with that, um, I'll second it. But um, I, I, I did have a question from a comment you made, Ed. And you can do this work without closing the wharf? <laughs> I'm not going to say that. Maybe Brad will. <laughs> what? Uh, okay, the last time we did the rebuild, the wharf was closed. It was closed for, um, gosh, I want to say three or four months. There was quite a few piles that were, were were um, replaced. What really needed to be closed was was the replacement of the decking. If you replace all the decking, you you pretty much have to close the wharf. Right. I'd have to look back, and I want to say though that it was done. I think it was it was done around the seasons, so that I think they went in and did. I, I'll, I'll have to look back. I should. I would have the records. But yeah, I, I, th I th when they're driving piles, and replacing the decking, they're going to have to close it. I, I would be surprised if if it could be done without closing it. They've done some of the other work before where they haven't, where they've replaced the onesie twosies piles, but um, I would I would expect that there would have to be some closure of it for some period during the during the during the during the work. Okay. Well that uh, my recollection that it had been closed before and so I didn't I don't I didn't want the public to think that well this is not going that the wharf will continue to be fully accessible. Uh, during this period of, of reconstruction. Um, so, but I'm sure you guys will coordinate it so it has the minimal impact, you know, um, upon the restaurant and public access and, and the bait shop. We'll, we'll get it there and the bait shop, so. You know, I was just gonna add that we, part of the project is not only just the widening of the trestle, but we will be replacing the piles that were identified in the report as needing replacement now. Yeah. So that'll be part of it, so that, that is Wharf wide with, with that effort. Okay. I think just for clarification, I, I, the message I was trying to send is we're not going to do this during the prime summer season, is, is the message I want to send to, to Mr. Right. Case that, that, you know, when we do this, we can pick an opportune time to do this. And that, that's the only point. Rather than the rebuild where we, we would be t closing you down for a year or two, that's, uh, that's my, the point I was trying to make. <laughs> okay. If I may, just a clarifying question regarding my ask of evaluation of the parking op options by accepting the motion today does that still include that at a later time or is that something that you just didn't include in your motion aren't we going to have a design that comes back that we're going to have to find uh, approve or is this yeah y eventually but but if we want to include that it sh i would like it included in the motion if you want us to look at ways to expand the parking well, th th that becomes a philosophical uh, right. discussion, okay? Because my personal feeling is is that I, I, I don't want to promote driving on the wharf. I would be open to some additional ADA parking places, uh, but my, my, my gut intent is not to promote this. Is th it's not a drivable wharf. I don't want it to be a drivable wharf. Uh, it, I don't know if what we're doing would allow delivery vehicles to deliver would it be strong enough to allow different kind of delivery vehicles? Vehicles that would be a question I'd be concerned about, and I'd be open to. Um, but the, the only the only additional parking I would be interested in is if, if there was a, a some opportunity at not an expensive cost to add some d ADA parking places. Can I make a friendly amendment or suggestion sure. for a friendly amendment? Sure. Um, what about the option of, of continuing with your motion just with the request for staff to provide um, 
just basic pricing for how much more would it cost for something like that? Not a whole other design, not a whole other boat, just we would like that information for our own knowledge and then in the future if we decide that's something we want to move forward with, we can. Friendly, friendly amendment to that to uh, provide options for additional parking. Perfect, thank you. Okay. Does that meet that what you're going for? Okay. So, yeah. so the way we would interpret that, I think, is we w work with Moff and Nick a little bit to identify, you know, if that I little corner were infilled, how many parking spaces would it result in and what would be the added cost? And so you may come back and find out that it's three new parking spaces and it's $150,000 that may help guide the decision one way or another. Because this is going to include uh, that stripping so the uh, decking doesn't get damaged. Yeah, I think we're going to include that. Well, no what, no? and I, I look Ooh. at that. I'm sorry, Mark, go ahead. No, no I, I was just following up on that. So well that's the other consideration. Yeah, well, looking back, it was like 1998 that the last time that particular area was looked at specifically. So this might right. be something that comes out of, of that evaluation is Perfect. Yep. So part part of the problem, if I'm not mistaken, that's where the boats are stored in the winter time. Um, oh, so you know, there's there's some conflict. The boats are actually stored. If you look at here, they're stored in this area, and there is parking here. It's just whether we can extend it and add more parking. It's going to be extended. That's, yes. that's all I mean. Okay. Great. Bring us an option. Got it. So we're going to get you. some options, which is good. It, like we said, it's always good for discussion just purposes. Just information. Yeah. yeah. So there's been a motion. I just want to clarify that with the amendment. You're, you're fine, fine with it and you are the second. Yeah, I'm yeah. fine. Okay, there's been a motion and a second. All those in favor say aye. 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 And the motion passes, thank you very much. I voted for it because if Ed says it's affordable, it's definitely something I want to vote for. Steve said we had the money. Yeah, <laughs> well, you know, but I'm looking at you on this one, okay. Thank you. <laughs> so now we have item B, 8B. Uh, we have uh, designating two new 24 village parking spots. 24 minute <coughs> parking spots. Steve. So the item before you is to consider the addition of two would be new parking spots are currently in a red zone on Capitol Avenue. Quick some background on April 4th of this year, the Planning Commission approved permits for a takeout restaurant at 401 Capitol Avenue. 401 Capitol Avenue, just north of the trestle across the street here does not have any, on str any parking either on street or on site uh, for the business. Um, the Planning Commission did discuss including uh, adding on street parking as part of it, but it was really beyond their jurisdiction to do. Um, so it was not part of their recommendation, not part of the condition of the project um, to add any parking. The property owners at both 331 Capitol Avenue, which is the trestle building just south of the trestle and 401 Capitol Avenue where the new business is going, have submitted a request for 24 minute parking on green curbs. Um, just to be clear, the city council is the only um, authority to designate parking areas in the city. Um, there's various colors that you can designate, white, red, uh, and green. Option D is green, which means from 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. there is limited, parking is limited to 24 minutes. If we did add these spaces, they would be numbered and metered. Um, I don't know if we'd put individual meters, but they could be paid for at the pay stations. So here's a, a quick map. So this building here is where the new business is being located, uh, takeout food business. There is a green a area that is currently red, and it's mainly due to the being on the corner and the and kind of narrowing of the road here. Uh, if we do relocate the center stripe about north one foot, we could accommodate these uh, two new spaces here. We wouldn't want to go more than that or we're going to start blocking uh, visibility from people pulling out of the trestle building parking lot. So there's two areas here that we could certainly designate. Um, be honest with you, we could designate them as full-time parking or we could do them as, as green as has been requested. So um, that's my report and I'd be happy to answer any questions. Um, before we get into questions, um, I'd like to uh, thank you, Steve and Katie, for meeting with the uh, concerned property owners and working on an agreement that uh, you brought to us today. So thank you very much for that. Now we're open for questions from the City Council. Oh, Sam. Yeah, Sorry. thank you, Mayor. Um, just trying to think a little bit ahead. Um, if we were to widen the sidewalks or continue the widening project, uh up through this area, 
would the street still be wide enough to uh, be able to accommodate that? We're getting pretty narrow. So right now we have a 17 foot lane on the southern one and the northern one is 15 feet. So a 32 foot width. Um, we really wouldn't want to get much narrower than that and the parking stalls themselves are seven feet wide. Um, we probably have a foot or two, but no more than that. And if we wanted to go to, you know, five foot sidewalks, we could probably do that. If we wanted to go to eight foot sidewalks now, then we wouldn't have room to maintain this parking. Okay, thank you. That was a great question that I didn't think about. Okay, um, any comments from the audience on this particular issue? Seeing none. Did I, did I see there? Where? Oh, the owner, the I did owner. not see. You respond. Okay. I turned away too fast. Sorry. Hi, good afternoon. So I'm the property owner of 401 Capitola. Speak into the microphone, please. Thank you. We'll just pull it down. Yeah. Thanks for coming. 401 Capitola Avenue. So I think that um, loading zone or 24 minutes parking it be beneficial for um, not only just my business, but the surrounding business just to drop off supplies. And so they won't be using um, the city parking and walk across the street and kind of uh, maybe jam up the traffic too because if they're carrying supplies across the street. Okay. Yeah, and glad to meet you too. Thank yep. you. Okay. Uh, thanks for your comments. Any questions of the property owner and the potential new business coming soon, right? Yes, the tea shop. Tea shop, yep. Okay. Um, I didn't get your name. I'm sorry. Amy Chang. Amy Chang. Okay. Thank you very much, Amy. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Um, any more comments? Seeing no more comments, back to City Council for motion and discussion. I move approval of the two. 24 minute parking spaces. Okay, is there a second? I'll second. Okay, a motion and a second. Sam? Can I, um, and I'm gonna support the motion, but I think I w do wanna state for the record that um, if it ever comes up that we have the ability and the funding to widen those sidewalks, I think that should have a priority if these parking spaces get in the way of that. Um, Absolutely. Uh, so I, did, I just wanna kind of from my perspective, put that out there. Um, and so we may need to reconsider this at some future date, but that could be a long way down the road, so to speak. Yeah. So we have an option, I think, of taking some of the city parking spots that are further up the road and converting those to green. I, th I think your question was a great one. Okay, Ed. I have a comment. Yeah, uh, Sam, when you made that comment, I, I'm, you know I'm a big fan of all the widening that, that we've done with this, I, and, and, and I, it, it was, it's an easy, uh, motion for us to remove these parking places should that ever present itself and that to me would be a priority uh, I think that in the time being though right now the way I see this we talked about these trying to acquire these parking places when I was on the parking commission that's how long ago it was and and the fire department just uh, pretty much arbitrarily painted it red for no, <laughs> for no reason so I'm glad we're acquiring these parking places back um, you know it, it could be a tough decision whether they're commercial or or um, 24, but I think the 24 will solve everybody's need because uh, just because of the, the, the time limit of it. And uh, the good thing about it is is that at 8 o'clock at night, it becomes two more additional parking places for the village, which is good. We, we all know we could use anything. Any, anything we can add down there is great. So it's, I think it's a, a great motion, and uh, I look forward to it. Okay, there's been a second. First and a second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Passes. Thank you very much. Thank you, Council. And thank you, Amy, for coming. Appreciate it. So we have something very important, our strategic plan contract. Mm. Uh, budget. 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 Do I have, I have C. No, I have C here. Not on his agenda. Oh, it's, oh, so there's a misnumbering here. Okay, uh, it's misnumbered, sorry. Okay, now we're on the budget. I was going by this one right here. Consider a resolution adopting the fiscal year 2019-2020 city budget and capital improvement program. Report from our finance director and treasurer. Good evening, Mayor and Council. 
Um, so this next item before you is adoption of the fiscal year 1920 budget. Um, by way of background, uh, the bu proposed budget was distributed on May 10th. The finance uh, advisory committee met on May 14th and then again on May 22nd to review the budget and advance the recommendation to the council following the May 22nd meeting. City Council held the public hearings on May 15th and then again on May 29th and on the at the meeting of the 29th considered the uh, fact recommendation regarding the uh, general fund balance and then requested staff to return this evening for budget adoption. So at that uh, May 29th meeting, the changes that we've done is we've included the $5,000 Beach Festival sponsorship partly by reducing the community TV contract services by 2000 so that impacts our uh, fund balance by reducing the revenues over expenditures down to $884. We've also uh, programmed in utilizing 550,000 of general fund balance for uh, the Rispin Park, Clare Street, pedestrian improvements and Kappa Ave sidewalk and retaining wall capital improvement projects, which will reduce our estimated fund by balance by just a little over 549,000, leaving an estimated fund balance June 30, 2020 of 700, just under 793,000. The May 29th meeting, we also talked about the restricted transit occupancy tax and how it relates to early childhood and youth pr programs. And we've set aside $2,500 as council directed for the child care center startup fee grant program, which leaves an unappropriated balance of 20,300. And at the meeting on the 29th, the council decided that we would bring that back following the um, community grant program review, which just to let you know where that is, we have all the proposals in, we're reviewing them right now, and we expect to be back in front of council at the July meeting to make a recommendation for the consultant to conduct that study and hope to have that whole project wrapped up by fall or winter of this year. Some of the items that we're tracking close this year, sales tax revenue, we're starting to see some signs of the economy slowing down, so we'll be really watching sales tax as close as we always do, but even a little closer this year. Um, cannabis tax, as you're all uh, well aware, our, our budget is balanced based on the assumption that we'll have two cannabis retail shops opening up and operating for about six months, so we'll make sure that those are tracking. Um, again, we that community grant program, the review, we should be back I think we'll be back before mid-year, but no later than mid-year to follow up on that. And then I can also bring back an update on the CalPERS releases, the actuarial reports in August, so we can um, come back and update what our UAL looks like in the next few years coming up. <coughs> Excuse me. And so the recommended action is to approve the resolution adopting the fiscal year 1920 operating budget and capital improvement program, and that completes my presentation. I'd be happy to answer any questions. Questions of our finance director. Um, I'll start it off. Um, so I think I asked a question about the UAL last time in terms of decreasing revenue and they smooth. So uh, the answer is pretty much the same. But at the time I asked the question, you weren't anticipating a drop in um, economic activity and you know sales tax revenue. So I think we might be seeing a little bit a, a little bit sooner the response in the UAL? Uh, potentially. It, what our sales tax does here doesn't necessarily reflect what CalPERS is doing with their investment portfolio. But it's economic activity. But it is economic it's not a direct activity, correlation. But yeah, yes, but that's it, on me. It yeah. could. I don't think their investment returns were great at the end of last calendar year, so I anticipate the UAL to go up, but I don't know that for sure. We're going to take Steve's phone away every time it comes to the meeting. Okay. Steve? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, okay. Uh, the Golden State winning? Come on, tell me. Okay. <laughs> okay, I'm sorry. So uh, I, I do anticipate an increase in UAL just because of the way the um, economy behaved at the last quarter of Got last it. calendar year. Okay. But we'll see what CalPERS says. What we lost at the end of last calendar year, we've almost made up so far in the first quarter of this year. Right. So it's just something we're monitoring really closely. Okay. I know you can't say exactly, but I just want to know. Okay. Um, any questions of Jim? Well, we've gone through a long process, and as you've stated, the Finance Advisory Committee has been 
um, quite participatory and some of the things they recommended have been incorporated as you mentioned. So we appreciate the response of the Finance Advisory Committee and, um, and everything else that the City Council has done in reviewing the budget. So I don't see any more questions, but I am surprised. So um, anyone in the audience have any comments or questions for our finance? Okay, no, I don't see any. Okay, coming back to the City Council. I'll move staff recommendation. Okay. Second. Okay, yeah, you guys want to go faster. May, may I add something though? Yes, yeah, sure. Um, regarding the grant program, uh, if we can get a report back on what the marketing plan is to let folks know that the grant program for the child care fees to be what that would look oh, like. Okay. In Absolutely. Okay. Thanks. Does that make sense? Okay, let's move along. Um, that's, that's a great one. Do we uh, vote? Mm -hmm. No, we haven't no, we voted. Vote. So we have a motion and a second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. So it passes. Thank you very much. So let's move on to, I have this out of order here. Okay. So item D here is the strategic plan. And Nikki, yes. Great. I'm getting used to seeing you up here a lot now. This is good. Well, Thank you, Mr. Mayor, Council Members. I am here to present an item for you about the Recreation Strategic Plan. Um, so in February, uh, Council allocated 13700 to support a Recreation Strategic Plan. And at a um, request for qualifi qualifications, RFQ was issued to the public. Uh, we received six responses to that, and staff met with the top three firms. All of those companies that were interviewed by staff provided an estimate cost between 60,000 60, and 80,000 um, for the project. Um, staff unanimously identified Blue Point Planning as the top firm, as it being the best fit for us to move forward with, and then worked with Blue Point in order to develop um, contract alternatives at different levels of funding for council review. So, um, at the current level of funding for the 13,700, uh, Blue Point Planning would engage a core team in order to conduct the program review. This core team would consist of staff and other internal stakeholders, um, and then they would provide a needs and opportunities assessment uh, based on that information, as well as staff could be responsible for hosting public meetings in order to solicit input to provide um, for with those core team meetings. And an infographic to kind of give you an idea as to what that would look like um, is, so this is the, those would be the steps that would be provided. So doing the program review, meeting with that core team, identifying um, needs and opportunities, recommending recommendations from the core team, and then a final strategic plan being produced by Blue Point. The second option is to a funding level of 35,000. So Blue Point planning in this option would um, conduct community engagement in order to have in, uh, input into um, the strategic plan. That would be two workshops that they would conduct um, a would also provide an online survey, and then with that is about 65 hours of preparation and analysis on this community engagement. There would also be um, a revenue and cost analysis provided at this level, and as well as the services um, that were included in the lower level of funding. And so for your view and infograph, infographic, um, that outlines each of those steps in this option for the strategic plan. Um, and then 
at the uh, final option would be a funding level of 58,000. Uh, blue point planning would provide two additional core team meetings and the community engagement at this level would provide for three workshops, um, six small user group meetings that would solicit group members of the public, um, it would provide for an engagement website and about 80 hours of preparation and analysis of the community engagement information and then services included at the lower level of funding. An infographic for you as to what those steps um, would look like as we would work towards the strategic plan. And I should have pointed out in the previous ones that it also at the bottom identifies the, the months, the length of time that um, each of these options goes, for, goes through. And so with that, um, that is the end of my presentation um, for your recommendations. Okay, uh, questions of Nikki? Nikki, do you have a preferred plan? The um, most, you want the most expensive one, or is there well, one that you feel? Yeah, I think, um, so I think that community engagement in this strategic plan is a highly valuable resource to have, as um, it really guides us as to, since a lot of recreation is services provided to the community, it would give us a, a really good guiding point. Um, as well as staff, everybody in recreation are exempt employees. Um, so the hours that we would have available is something for council to consider um, as we review, so. I think, I think it's, there, everyone in recreation is hourly. So yes, different yeah. from when public works goes out and you know we have uh, obviously right. uh, exempt employees who can work overtime Did to I do say this. Exempt? Yeah, 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 I was I wondering. Misspoke. Sorry. <laughs> I knew what you meant. I, I knew <laughs> what you were getting. I've been teaching first aid and CPR right. all day, so I might be a little talked out. <laughs> um, and just one follow-up question. To get to the that $35,000 level, it, um, the staff recommendation uh, recommends using the TLT childhood TLT funding from 1920. Is is that is that the 22,000 that's been bandied about? That yeah, I think it's about twenty thousand dollars left. I think that's a, yeah. sir, that's an option. I don't think it'd be an option to do all the funding for the strategic strategic plan, but given the interplay, obviously between RAC <coughs> and youth programming, it seems that you know if half or two thirds of the funding came from that, it would be a reasonable use. Understanding the council recently said, let's set that aside uh, for the time being. Thank you. I have a question. Um, so on the first option at 13, uh, there was a mention of staff working on uh, public engagement. Mm -hmm. um, staff has done that in the past, uh, most notably with um, public works projects. Um, has there been uh, internal discussion about how that would be managed? Because um, we don't normally do that outside of public works. So I'm just trying to get an idea of how that would work. and how you would approach it and if there's been internal discussion on that, on that issue. Well, um, in, in preparing this, I did have a conversation with the city manager and he guided me as much as saying that there is the, the staff do have the experience of hosting public meetings in order to solicit right. feedback mm -hmm. and that similar models could be used. Okay. I think it is fair to note though that, you know, Nikki and her staff are our recreation experts and you know certainly between community development my team and public works you know we can figure out a way to help out and do that it would probably need to happen after the summer uh, when recreation is calmed right. down a little bit um, and you know there would be a difference obviously blue point planning does this for a living engages right. the public process around recreation strategic plans um, so there'd be some inventing the wheel for us but but it is something I think that would be reasonable for us to look at this fall. Yeah, I think that's a good thing. Um, I, I know we have the staff uh, depth to do this. I just want to know if you've actually had that discussion, that's all. And it sounds like you have, that's good. Yeah. Just 
Yeah, so the uh, in our um, packet here, there's the whole elements of the strategic plan and it talks about the vision and the strategies and all that other great stuff. And at the, um, the lowest funding level, it pretty much ends at a needs assessment. So would there be, would we still have these goals, strategies, initiatives, tactics, priorities that came out of those user groups and, and still end up with an actual strategic plan at the end of it? Or would we essentially On have that? On the space option? Uh, that? Yes. Yeah, so it says the, the core team meeting, then the gaps needs an opportunity assessment, core team meeting, and then it says final strategic plan. So I guess what I'm wondering is, are we actually gonna get a whole strategic plan out of this, or are we just essentially gonna get that assessment from which we as a city create the strategic plan ourselves? Um, so in this, in this scenario, um, we would get an identified needs assessment from Blue Point Planning, uh -huh. um, and then based on that, the core team would move forward, make recommendations, and do all of the other levels of goal setting. Okay. So <coughs> that this option is a predominantly staff-driven option. Sure. Sure. Okay. So, so there's a final, you know, a, a whole strategic plan that's going to come out of this, but the blue point part of it kind of ends at that core team meeting. Um, uh, number two. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. My understanding. Okay. But I, I would say that that there, uh, without the revenue and operational analysis pieces of that and the goal setting, yeah, it would, yeah, it would be a predominantly staff-driven uh, uh, item. Okay. Thank you. Jamie? I think it's just clear if we were to choose this, I just want to make sure that everybody's expectations are on the same page. I mean, you know, it's it would be a strategic plan light, and that may be appropriate for our needs. It may be that we don't need as robust of uh, strategic plan and recreation as other communities. Um, but I think that it, we just want to make sure that everybody's clear about the expectations about what we're what we're getting out of this process. Yeah. Jeff, has there ever been a strategic plan? For Parks and Rec in the past? For Complete. Capitola? Mm -hmm. Has there ever been one created? Yeah. Okay. And then my second question is with this option one, let's say come mid year or when we get to that place, would there be opportunity to add on to expand further? Because this is six months. So when we get to mid year budget review, and we find that you know what we would like to fund this further. Is there that? Is there an opportunity at that point with Blue Point? Yes. I, yeah. I mean, you're, you're not cutting that process off now necessarily. Mm -hmm. Although, I think my guess is that they're going to engage. They're going to work with us through the summer and then the early fall. We're going to get sort of a product at some level. We would mm -hmm. host some community meetings and get some input. Right. They would disengage at that point. And I think at that point, it, we could reassess and say, you know, do we want more help or not? Um, right. But it is a little bit sort of a funny starting and stopping to the, uh, to the project. Well, I'm just thinking that this is a great starting point to see if staff, the team is capable of wrapping, up, wrapping it up as Vice Mayor Peterson was alluding to, where, you know, at the end game, if you, we can't come up with something of weight for the final strategic plan on our own, then we could continue working with them if need be. It's just, that's, that's what I was thinking. I, th I think that's a great comment because um, we'll have a better idea of the scenario, you know, wh what's out there and our response from the community. And so we might decide we want to put some more money or some more resources into this. And as you just mentioned, are we actually going to have something we actually want that we're going to be able to run with? And you're going to be part of making that decision. And so I certainly would look to you to say, you know, what we have is workable or what we have, we need to do a little bit more work on it if we're going to be successful in Capitola. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I would, I would look for, you know, that from you for sure. And the core group's recommendations about your recommendation. Yeah. So, want to make a motion? Who would like to make sure. a motion? Okay. I'll make a motion to um, adopt option 
one, A, I don't know, base option four to six months. What is this? This one. The current funding model level at um, at 13,700. Second. Okay, and did you want to include, um, you know, reviews along the way? I mean, I'd like to know how you feel the process is going. Uh, that Get like updates? Yeah, because I, I want, uh, this is new in Capitola. Uh, I think your question was a great one. And being that it's new, what's the public response going to be? Um, uh, you're new to this area, so how do you feel it's working? You know, I, I'd kind of like to see, um, I'd like to m uh, make a sub-motion if that would be agreeable, mm -hmm. that uh, we do get a report, uh, an update report at some point, so we can see how the process is going, and uh, you'll be able to tell us how it's going, and then maybe we need some more resources. I don't know. Mm -hmm. Is that a friendly what? amendment? Yeah, that's a friendly amendment. <laughs> should I should I reiterate? Um, I I'm assuming that through this process there will be updates at future council meetings. Okay. That's just the process of going through a strategic plan. Uh, normally, okay. so I I'm assuming that yeah. would happen. But okay, um, I would I would add that we would like to see updates come after it's a four to six month maybe, uh, you know, between four. <laughs> in six months a report back yeah I, I would be happy to do that thank you, um, you agree with and that? I'm on board with that as good okay, second great. Yeah. okay thanks I don't like to assume things okay so mm -hmm. Sam before you call for the vote can I just ask for clarification that under the option that's been moved here um, th there is no community engagement component to that right is that no it's going to be staff driven by staff by staff exactly well so the staff is going to reach out to the community for input? Uh, yes, at this, at this level it would be staff that would be reaching out to get um, community input into the strategic plan. So you would be the third bullet point hosting public meetings to solicitate input? Yes. Any, any uh, online presence? We could potentially do that, yes. There is, we could put something on our website. Uh -huh. Okay. Um, thank you. Um, yeah, I, I, my experience with strategic plans that the, one of the most important components of it is the community engagement. Because if we don't have a sense of what the community wants um, and needs, um, I don't. I don't think you have a very good strategic plan because it doesn't align with what the community is, um, um, you know, really desires to see. And so I think that's a key, important piece of it. I'm not sure having consultants and putting that all on the staff to do that kind of work. Um, it seems rather problematic to me. Um, and I just assume if we're going to do a strategic plan, we um, do it at the $35,000 level and just build in the community engagement uh, out front because otherwise I think it's going to be um, not an effect very effective mm -hmm. strategic plan. So, If I may add, I, I trust that this process would would work well with the, s the current staff being capable of in, in of responding and reaching out to the community. We've seen other things like that locally happen um, with social media, and so I feel that staff is capable of implementing that piece of the strategic plan, and so that's, that's where I would stand with the motion. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I, 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 I support the motion. Uh, you know, I, I've seen a lot of uh, public meetings, uh, went through lots of these with the RTC when they did uh, community groups. Uh, I'm worried about sometimes having overkill on these meetings. I also have great confidence in our staff. Uh, I, I feel like there's this commitment by the city manager to involve his office, public works, recreation, to hold these community meetings, and I have confidence that they can, can meet that need. Um, I know that, you know, just uh, uh, when we had the meeting at, uh, at the mall, if people have an interest to come out, they will show up. There were around 200 people at that meeting. So 
I think the thing is, you know, we're, we're primarily a junior guards driven town. So there'll be interest to make sure that all that's protected. But I think that this, in this will have some interest. And if we advertise the meeting, uh, it's just a matter of who the facilitator of that meeting is. And like I said, this is where you just put confidence in your employees. I know we've already done a lot of things where we've allowed public works to take on additional projects because the, 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 the crews decided they would like to do that and it's been successful. So I think this is just a case of empowering the employees and staff and I'm gonna just uh, throw the olive branch out here to uh, recreation and give them a try and I'm gonna support the measure. Thanks very much. Um, I do have a comment to make. Um, I, I think in running the public meetings yourself and actually directly participating in that process with the public is going to be a richer experience for the city of Capitola and for you and the recreation department. I think that richer experience is going to become be because of the direct involvement as opposed to having a consultant do it. Nothing against the consultant and the projects, uh, I mean the, the products that they produce, but they're the ones that are going to get that direct experience. If we do it ourselves, I've heard a lot of people sometimes, well not a lot of people, but I've heard often that you know we keep asking for consultants to do things for us and, and that's a true thing because we don't have a lot of bandwidth. But in this case, I see your enthusiasm and the recreations department's enthusiasm to do this. So I feel confident that we could actually do it on that score also. So I definitely support the motion. I have just a really quick question, yeah. just out of curiosity. Right now, when someone enrolls in one of our recreation department programs, when it's over, is there any kind of survey for them to fill out on if they got what they wanted out of it, if there was anything they wanted different, anything like that? So, yeah, with, um, with the recent change in the class coordinator, we introduced a evaluation um, that we actually reach out to the students instead of it going through the contracted instructor, okay. which is Good. quite different and unique. Yeah. Um, and we have had discussions about doing that for our upcoming summer program. Great. But nothing, they haven't started yet. No, so. that, that, that's great. <laughs> yeah. um, one last comment. Um, uh, I hope you're going to include in your core group uh, someone from the uh, Soquel School District. Because, um, I mean, that's obviously a, a good avenue to get the word out. But uh, we are partners um, there, in a sense, a partner with us in our rec district because we uh, advertise to the whole school district and we try to serve them as well. So I just thought I'd throw that out because. Um, Mr. Mayor? Yes. Can, can we do a roll call vote on this? Yeah. Okay. So we have a motion and a second. And um, C. Clear, please, a roll call vote. Councilmember Story? Aye. Councilmember Peterson? Aye. Councilmember Brooks? Aye. Councilmember Bator? Aye. And Mayor Bertrand? Aye. Passes unanimously. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, thank you for that presentation. Mm -hmm, thank you. So, make sure the order is correct here. Last but not least. Yeah. So I have an announcement to make that I need to read because of the last item here. I don't know if I'm going to. Okay. Um, before the City Council this evening as part of the agenda item 8E is a, is a recommendation to consider a contract with RWG Legal for City Attorney Services. The City Attorney reports directly to the City Council and is considered a local agency executive. The proposed contract with RWG Legal is $11,130 per month for two months. The total of the contract is for $22,260. With that, let's start this particular item. E, consider a new interim city attorney contract. Report from staff, please. Uh, Mr. Mayor, members of the council, as was previously reported, the city has issued a request for proposals for city attorney services. Um, Reed Gologli has served as the lead attorney for the city for the past several months. Uh, Reed, Mr. Gologli will be starting his own legal firm here beginning in July and has submitted a proposal to serve as interim city attorney while the city awaits the proposals and goes through the selection process for a city attorney. Um, as the mayor reported, this contract is in the same amount as the 
prior city attorney contract, $11,930 a month. Um, and we do have one minor recommendation to the contract, which is an item 5B, the termination language by attorney should it be 60 days, not 30 days, as was identified in the packet. And with that, I'm available for questions. Any questions of the city manager? Any questions from the members of the audience? Bring it back to city council for deliberation. Motion to approve staff recommendation. Second. A roll call vote on this, please, since it's a contract. Council Member Story? Aye. Council Member Peterson? Aye. Council Member Brooks? Aye. Council Member Botter? Aye. And Mayor Buchanan? Aye. So that brings us to item 10, adjournment. Thank you very much for everyone. Uh, we have here. a successor agency yes. meeting. Well, the regular meeting adjournment, and now we have a successor agency. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So uh, call to order the successor agency. Do we need a um, agenda? Excuse me. We don't need a roll call, do we? No, we can note everyone is present. Okay, everyone is present. Okay. So any additional items for this? Staff has no additions. Okay. Uh, any public comment? Seeing no public comment, back to city council for um, staff comments. Staff has no comments. Okay, consent calendar, consider May 29th joint workshop minutes. Anyone from audience have any issues with the joint minutes? No, okay, bring it back to city council. Motion to approve minutes. Is there a second? Second. second. Okay, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, general government hearings. Adopt the fiscal year budget 2019-2020. Recommend in action, Jim. Thank you, Mayor and Council. Um, this last item is just kind of the cleanup for the last page of the budget document that was in the packet earlier. I don't, I didn't prepare any presentation, but I would be happy to answer any questions. Okay, any questions for Jim? Uh, any questions from the audience? Seeing none, back to City Council for a motion. Move staff recommendation. Second. Okay, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. So at this point, I'd like to adjourn the meeting until next time. Thank you very much. Hmm? Oh, no. <laughs> Curry can't help us now. Let's